one of the realities that's already setting in is, is just a few hours into their opening arguments, they're already repeating the same points they made for 13 hours yesterday. And I suspect the Democrats, through a fit yesterday, insisted they needed at least three full days to present the arguments. I think we're going to see an awful lot of repetition making the same points over and over again. There were two things in particular today that I thought were highly notable. Number one, several of the Democratic managers made the case that, that, that Ukraine, denying Ukraine military aid, endangered lives, was, was a tremendous blow to American national security and was wrong. Even a moment of delaying military aid to Ukraine risked lives. Um, you know, there's an old saying that, that, that hypocrisy uh, is the tribute vice pays to virtue. And, and this is a really powerful example because if there is such a compelling national security interest to give military aid to Ukraine, then what do these House Democrats have to say about the years that Barack Obama refused to give lethal military aid to Ukraine? And in fact, I traveled to Ukraine in, in 2014, came back and urged Barack Obama to give lethal military aid to Ukraine. The Obama administration refused to do so. Instead, they sent blankets and MREs, but they wouldn't give lethal aid. On the other hand, the Trump administration has given Javelin missiles, has sold Javelin missiles that can take out Russian tanks. And so if the House manager's argument is correct, I, I guess the consequence is under their argument, maybe they should have impeached Obama if not giving military aid to Ukraine was, was a deep threat to U.S. national security. A second point. I think the House managers made a very serious strategic error today. Adam Schiff's arguments to open the day today directly drew into question Hunter Biden and made not only his testimony relevant, which it already was, but it is now critical because the House Democrats have built their entire case on the proposition that any investigation into Barisa and corruption was a sham, that it was completely debunked. The problem is there is very significant prima facie evidence of corruption. Hunter Biden, the son of the then sitting president, Joe Biden, was being paid $83,000 a month, a million dollars a year. This is someone with no background in oil and gas, no experience. And at the same time, Joe Biden has publicly admitted that he threatened Ukraine, he withheld or threatened to withhold a billion dollars of aid unless and until Ukraine fire, fired the prosecutor that was potentially investigating the company on which his son served on the board. If the House manager's case is based on the allegations of corruption concerning Hunter Biden and Joe Biden being a sham, then it is directly relevant. And I got to say, the need for the Senate to hear the testimony of Hunter Biden and the need for the Senate to grant the White House lawyers the ability to take that testimony has become all the more relevant. One last observation. Yesterday, Representative Nadler threw up great indignation and he said out of hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian companies, how can it be that President Trump was just concerned with this one, this one company, Burisma? Well, the obvious answer that the House managers ignore is Burisma was the only Ukrainian company that had the son of the vice president that had real prima facie indications of American corruption. We're not talking about some abstract interest in any sort of corruption that might exist in Ukraine, but if you have a sitting vice president making public policy decisions to benefit his family to the tune of a million bucks a year, that raises a serious question of corruption and a president not only is justified in asking for that to invest, be investigated, but has a responsibility to see that that's investigated. And that was a question not about Ukrainian corruption, but a question about American corruption and Ukraine being integral in helping investigate whether there was in fact American corruption. I think we're going to hear another day, two and a half days of arguments from the House Democrats but the longer they talk at this point, the weaker the case is getting. Senator, you said that you... Of, uh, we of, uh, decision, uh, the decision on calling witnesses is a decision in the first instance for the parties. 
and for the party's counsels. And so the question on calling Hunter Biden is going to be a decision for President Trump's lawyers to make initially if they ask to call Hunter Biden. If they ask to call Hunter Biden, if they ask to call the whistleblower, if they ask to call other potentially relevant witnesses, then the Senate will have to make a decision whether to grant that request. I don't think the Senate should force the parties to call witnesses that they don't, their lawyers don't make the decision to call. But I do think the Senate has an obligation to conduct a fair trial. That means to respect due process. You know, it was striking. We're, we're, one of the talking points that the House managers are, are pushing is they keep saying fair trial, fair trial, fair trial. Yesterday, uh, or actually today, Adam Schiff said, if, it, 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 if a defendant is denied the right to call witnesses to prove his innocence, that's not a fair trial. Well, the problem is that is exactly what House Democrats did, where they put on prosecution witnesses. They refused to allow Hunter Biden to be called. Now, the, the House Democrats have now made Hunter Biden central to the question of the president's interest, and yet they did exactly what they said. The Senate will do a better job. We will conduct a fair trial, as has been demonstrated this week. We're giving the House Democrats all the full opportunity to present their case, but then due process mandates that the president is entitled to full opportunity to present his case, to present his defense, and I look forward to the Senate hearing that.